Okay. So this session is uh, just for how we can, you know, write better unit test cases using Kotlin. Okay. And uh, so we have seen uh, previously that we are using Kotlin with Micronaut. And Micronaut having uh, unit test case, rather integration test cases, just like Spring uh, context, it loaded everything when you annotate with the Micronaut test. And then you mocking the bean with the mock beans, right? And also when you're writing the test cases, there are some patterns we can follow to better, uh, you know, write concise test cases. So when you write the unit test cases in Kotlin, what you wanted to do is we wanted to create more readable test cases, clean test cases, idiomatic and concise and provide reasonable failure method. So we can understand what kind of tests are getting failed, what is the particular you know, issue with that particular test cases. So we can quickly fix that. But how we can do that? We can do that by managing the test lifecycle with JUnit, uh, by choosing a proper mocking framework, grouping and naming the test cases, uh, choose proper test libraries, use test data classes for assertion, and how we can integrate with the Spring. So normally, if we recap that, uh, one of the some of the major features of Kotlin languages, like it is uh, more preferable to using val for immutability rather than var, not nullable or by default unless you make it with a question mark. And also we have like a non-static access are not being allowed. This is not directly supported by the language. So how we can, you know, what happened when he previously uses uh, JUnit port, right? So if you have like a multiple test cases, for each of the test cases, what you have is the your major test. For example, say this is like a repository test case, which has like a Mongo dependency. So it's a MongoDB repository test cases. So here we created a immutable Mongo creation, Mongo template creation, maybe. And we have like two test cases defined, test cases one and test case two. Now, in that case, what happened is your instance one is being created. And then you have like a, for each of the test cases, your instances will be created, right? And the val mongo is executed for each of the test cases. So you can say this is like a limitation of JUnit port, where the number of instances of the classes are getting increased by the number of test cases. So it will create more memory and more time it will create use for running the test cases. Also, normally, where we generally put our initialization code. Okay. What you can put that for writing that test case in JUnit 4. So in JUnit 4, normally we cannot uh, make this field static, right? Normally it is not been supported. Uh, so what you need to do, you need to put any kind of you know class level variable. We know that we have to use the companion object block, right? And for uh, having that particular static we have to annotate with JPM static. We can certainly use before class. So that ensures that you have only one initialization block before class and where you can, you know, initialize your, uh, you know, Mongo object and your repository with the Mongo host and port. Okay. So that means only the, only once and we know that you know before class or before each, instead of this Mongo instance being created each time that particular test method is run, we choose the before classes and we use the JVM 
static for that because that static feature is not by default being supported in the Kotlin language. That one way we can initialize and reduce the number of classes or you know the whatever objects we're going to create or mock, they are only being mocked only once. JUnit 5 uh, can you know address this where JUnit 5 has the the reusable test life test instance method annotation. So that means here test instance method say that you controlling the life cycle per class rather than per method. Okay. So you can overwrite that with a test instance. So that means your repository object will be only created once and correspondingly your Mongo object and your repo object which you create are only created one irrespective of how many tests are there into your classes. So that's instance annotation you can use. So by default, it will address the issue of JUnit 4 that we have, like here the your repository test object is created twice, and these objects are executed for each of the classes. Now, what you can do, you can annotate this, and this object is only created once. Okay. And any question on this? On the test instance, what it does? What is the improvement? So Hello. why we are using this one, test instance? Yeah. So here we are using and we are seeing the part instance, part class. So what happened is, if you say you have like five test cases are there, right? So if you have five test cases there, your test, the test case object, right, will not be created five times. Or your Mongo object or your diver or dependency, whatever you're doing, they are only going to be executed only once. So that we can use in our JUnit uh, 5 instance. We can use before each also. Yeah. Before each, before each is not going to address this, right? Okay. And before each means what? Before each means for each test cases, you're going to be creating this object each of the time, right? Yes. 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 Yeah. So before each, you're not going to be addressed that. So in JUnit 5, what you can use is a before class. And we need to make this static. So for this static, we have to use the JVM static keyword and rational other, right? So that means you are holding their references into uh, variable that is by default static because in Kotlin we don't find the static and you have like a need to additionally put the companion object if you're using JUnit 5. Four. As you are currently using JUnit 5, so what this gives us, it will allow us to control how many times this object will be created or this object, the dependent object will be created. It will be only created once, not for number of test cases. So that you can control by this annotation, that's test instance. Which instance? The instance of this repository test class will be created per class. So per class basis, only one object will be created. And whatever you know the instance method of this classes are will only be initializing only once instead of multiple test cases. That is so before each will not help here. Okay. okay. So that will reduce the number of object being created of this repository test and also it help us to reduce the memory it takes. So it will speed up the process. Okay. So like we have to instantiate all the object of that class using uh, this annotation test instance. Yeah, test instance. So that means this this object, this test instance means what? The test class is only going to be created once. Okay. Okay. And another thing is that what else we can use? We can use 
but we need a block. along with this, for initialization, okay? Okay, so your code is much more readable rather than using other it, JVM static, etc. You can use well rather than what, because these have been your init block, it been created, so it will be initialized only once, and they have been immutable, OK, and then your test case class is also being created only once, not number of test cases that are there. You can put 10, 15 test cases, but only one instance will be created because the life cycle we are saying per class. Now, what is the problem with this approach is that for each of the test cases, you have to put this annotation on top of the test class, right? So, if we have like a five test case everywhere, we have to put it. Can we make it by default a default behavior of JUnit file? Yes, we can do. For that, what you need to do, we need to put under SRC test resources JUnit platform dot properties, and we just put JUnit Jupyter test instance lifecycle default is per class. So if you put this particular properties files in the resources for JMnit5, so we don't have to use the test instance annotation multiple times. So it will be act as a by default if you can use this. Okay. So that we don't have to repeat the annotation multiple times, we can simply use this using this property file. And we can ensure that this has been initialized per class basis rather than the default behavior that is the per method basis. That is one improvement we can do. Okay. Now, normally what you do, we write the test cases, give the name. Say, for example, we are writing the test cases of checking that whether the tag client, whatever client that has been fetching for, say, external API, right? And we wanted to see that we're going to be having some cases the tags are written out of this will be empty. Are they going to be returning default or basic list? Okay. After the tag translation, they may have like empty. Okay. Based on certain condition. Now here we can give better name cases rather than give like normally we write what test empty tag list, right? It's not very readable, right? it will be test empty tag list rather than we can use back ticks to replace or give more meaningful name for our test cases what we are testing rather than giving the cryptic name like test uh like for example in our cases what you use the like test update lesson rather than we get test update lesson for activity or test update lesson activity with metadata right so we can simply write this in a simple language so everybody who wanted to see can understand this rather than the writing a long test cases name that we have right we can using backtick that is supported Simply, you know, give it proper name for our test case functions in Kotlin. Okay, so then this will be represented in your running when you right click and run. This will be how this will be represented. 
and also in your log you can also see that when you are running either by Jenkins or using Gradle. Okay. Clear? Sir, I have a question mm -hmm. that we are using JUnit 5 with Kotlin for unit testing. Mm -hmm. And also, like we are using Kotlin with Micronaut as well as JUnit 5 for unit testing. All right. So, Micronaut we create or load the whole index right that's why what my recommendation will be using a mocking framework right rather than loading the whole context whole context means here your lessons will be loaded your lesson controller will be loaded all the beans will be created so what happened we find that our unit test cases is taking more time Right, hmm. and it every time created the whole context. It takes a lot of time to load. Whether you just simply wanted to write our unit test cases to check whether the certain JSON or value we are returning is can be simply been translated on a controller layer or our service, right? So in that case we can simply use some kind of a mocking frame. Okay. But here we are seeing that we can give it the better names rather than writing very cryptic name like test empty test list all together. So, so it's very not very readable, right? But this is like very simple readable names. Okay. So this thing we can also do in a Java with the at the rate name annotation of JMRate. But here it is supported out of the box. By the language filter or backtick. So in JUnit 5, we, we don't use any any type of mocking, right? No, we Geo have to use uh, in JUnit 5, we generally use JUnit mocking, right? Here, there are, I can also showcase another kind of a like a mocking framework that we can use that is known as mock. That I'm coming to that. Okay. okay, but okay. this portion we have understood, right? We can give it easy name, so we can, you know, start following this rather than scripting long function names, right? Let's uh, follow that. Okay, and this will be, you know, you can also put something like a message, like check if this settings of certain version is written something, right? So that can be easily understood. Okay, so we can give better name to this but here is one problem right here is one problem is uh like normally what we do is for each of the test cases we put different scenarios right if we have a different if walls it else block we write for a single unit or method for it testing a particular method we write four or five test cases for covering that particular method for different scenario right now even if we give this names right is very difficult to understand which method this particular test cases are belong to. Okay, so that can be done by grouping test cases by using at the rate nested inner classes. Okay, so nested inner classes, how we need to use that at the rate nested? These are all JUnit 5 feature inner class. Whatever get design. So get design is the get design method for which we are writing it. Or inner classes delete design. So these are the function delete function for which we are writing. So this design will be removed from the DB or the all the field will be written or limiting parameters will be used. So we can you know nest that. So for that, say for example, in our lesson controller, right, or lesson service, we have different scenario. Right, for example, you have implemented some case where we are passing the fetch lesson lenient, and sometimes we are lenient too when the lenient is false. But instead of this, we can put search function or fetch lesson, and there we can put two function names. Now, if we write this way, we can now group the functions under. This. So this kind of output we'll see when we run the test case using our IntelliJ. So it is very easy 
when you're looking into the output that which function is failing for which method right right now it's all together we cannot differentiate that so that differentiation can be done with the nested inner classes here the gate design is a gate design method or daily design is a delete name right that we can use correct any this we have understood why you're doing this so just to group the test cases so if you have like a four five test cases below one single method we can group them together okay now what kind of testing framework normally we generally use for java we use jmunit 5 we can use mockito right and for assertion right we normally what you use we use the jmunit 5 assertions dot assert equal asset to etc etc right but there is a uh, library that is there that is the assertion g you can also use assertion g with the port link as well but here we can also use uh, there is like spec are there Kotlin tester are there but we should be using unit 5 out here okay so here we are can use the unit 5 and we can also use the mock framework and we can also try to use the assert J where the assertions are much more easier to read. So that can be, we can make a combination because there are certain advantage of using mock over mockito that we are coming to next. Okay. So what we know the all the classes are final by default in Kotlin means what? What is the Mockito does? It creates a proxy or a mock object by extending that class so that it can override the behaviors or introduce the default behavior. But it cannot do it. So if you wanted to use Mockito, you are not able to do it because it will say that your classes are final either you make the class to be extended further by the mocking framework. So what are the solutions we have? So one of the solution that I have used, if you guys have seen in the PR comment, is that for the hierarchy service, I have introduced a interface that is hierarchy service. And I have renamed the hierarchy service to hierarchy service implementation by extending the interface why that was required because without that your mock beam annotation will not okay similarly if you have seen i have also changed i have removed the interface i have made the class open by adding a open and a keyword before our class so open class okay in our hierarchy service so what does that it lets the class to be extended further we have to use all all of this or only one or of one of the one of the one of the solutions right either we can use interface or we can make it open okay and mockito has a incubation feature which can allow to mock final classes but that is not by default enabled. Okay. And then there is an alternative to use the mock additional framework, which can be used in place of a mock it. Let's see how. So in mock it, what do you have? We have like MOCK mock method with which we can mock here. It indicate MOCK mock then K, K for Kotlin. 
So this particular mocking framework is written for port link to support the default final class mock extension. So how we can use that? We can simply, instead of using only MOCK mock, we use the extra key. That will create a mock of this class, OK? And then we have like every mock class we can, you know, so every class, every interaction, we're going to have a, like a client mock, get user, any, any is the matcher, right? And then for that, you're going to be returning a user object, which is much more readable. And then you are calling the uh, user update with the client mock, and then you have the val well updater is returned. Now you have like an updater, update user one, which has a dependent object like a client, user client. So it will go here and if the client will mock get user any, that means you can pass any value, right? And based on any, every invocation, it will be returning user ID one with the name object pin, okay? And then, you can do the assertion on top of that. Now you can also verify, like we have like a mock to verify, we can also verify that client mock is being called by the gate user value one. Okay. Uh, so Priya, we have to pause the recording here. So this is uh, just for 30 minutes. Can you pause the recording? Hello. Maybe she's not here. Yeah.